describing characters in plays? Yes, that's the featured skill in today's edition of Literacy Corner. I'm Mr. McCoy. Here comes today's edition. Our first play is The Treasure. Be on the lookout for what motivates Iris's behavior. Setting. Iris and Gus, her younger brother, standing in a forest. Iris holds a map. Iris, studying the map. We're supposed to turn left up here, by that big tree. Gus, nervous. But it's getting dark and Mom told us to be back for dinner. Iris, annoyed. Seriously, Gus? We're searching for buried treasure. The world won't end if we get home a little late. Gus, nodding his head. Yeah, I guess you're right hesitantly. But, Iris, that's more like it. Let's get going. We can't let Victor and Elsa beat us. They start walking. A sudden breeze whips the map from Iris's hand. Iris, oh no, the map. A huge wind gust whisks the map into a tree. Gus, now what are we going to do? Iris, I guess one of us is going to have to climb up there. Gus, but I'm afraid of heights. Iris, shivering. Ugh, I am too, but do you think I'm going to let that stop us? We're so close. She takes a deep breath and starts climbing. Gus, look, it's, it's, points to a gold coin in the dirt under the tree. So what motivates Iris's behavior? Share with your fellow listener. Our next play is William Tell. It's adapted from a Swiss folktale. And as you immerse yourself in this drama, be on the lookout for the character traits of both William Tell and the sheriff and what motivates each of these characters. Setting, a busy marketplace in Altorf, Switzerland. William, come my son, I have sold the cowhides. Now we must buy the things your mother has asked us to get. Albert. Yes, Father, and what about a toy for little Lewis? William. You are a good boy to remember your little brother. Officer. Stop, man! Why do you not salute the cap of your king? The officer points to a pole. On top is a cloth cap. It belongs to the Austrian king who has conquered Switzerland. William. I love my country, but I refuse to honor the Austrian king who forces suffering upon my people. Officer, then I'll arrest you as a traitor. What is your name? William, standing tall. William Tell. Officer, and this is your son? Looks to a nearby soldier. Soldier, tie the boy to that tree over there. William, leave him be. He is only a child. Officer, I hear you are a famous shot. Perhaps you can shoot an apple from the head of your son. If so, I will let you go free. William, never, you villain. I would rather die than risk hurting him. Now, let him go and take me to jail. Officer, you will both die unless you shoot the apple, as I say. William, thinking aloud. Oh, dear life, what am I to do? Albert, trembling. Father, I want to go home. William, stand still, my brave boy. I promise I'll not hurt you. He shoots, and then he falls to his knees, sighing with relief. Soldier, the apple is split. That was a fine shoot. Officer, frowning, I did not believe anyone could make it. I suppose I must honor my word and set you free. So, what are the character traits of William Tell and the officer, and what motivates each of these characters share with your fellow listener? Our third play is Robin Hood and the Mournful Knight. Listen to the play, listen for what motivates each of the characters, and be prepared to share that. Scene one, a camp in Sherwood Forest where Robin Hood and his men are crafting arrows. Little John, the huge man. My poor empty stomach is growling for dinner. 
I'd not say no to roast venison with rosemary and spring onions in a delicate cream sauce. Would you, Master Robin? Robin Hood. Stop! You sound like a recipe. Now my stomach too rumbles and grumbles for a meal. But first, we must find ourselves a wealthy traveler to pay the bill. Little John, please ride out and fetch us a Lord Moneybags. Little John, bowing. With pleasure, kind master. Robin Hood. Remember, friend, take care not to bother any simple farmers or laborers you meet. Those who toil for their few pennies deserve to live in peace. Fetch us some fat, selfish gentleman who treats the poor like dirt beneath his shoes. Will Scarlet. Look! Pointing. I've never seen a knight in such rags. What ails him, I wonder? Enter the knight. He looks weary and mournful. He wears fine clothes, but they are old, torn, and dirty. Robin Hood. Welcome, gentle knight. I am Robin Hood. Will you not dine with us? We were just discussing the menu. We have pheasant, partridge, venison, and, or all three, knight. Thank heavens for generous fellows like you. I have not tasted a bite for days. If I ever return to Sherwood Forest, I shall certainly repay your kindness. Robin Hood. Pardon me, Sir Knight, but here in Sherwood, our rich guests customarily pay in advance. Knight. How I wish I could, but I no longer have a penny to my name. Will Scarlet, suspiciously. He lies. All these gentlefolk lie through their teeth. Let me search his saddlebags, Master Robin. Robin Hood. Please do, Will. Pardon us, Sir Knight, but we do not offer charity to the rich. Will Scarlet, searching, then sounding baffled. I can't believe it. He speaks the truth. Robin Hood. What has befallen you, sir? You are surely a landowner, yet you are poorer than a beggar. Pray, tell us your story. Knight sits wearily on a fallen tree. A year ago, I was a wealthy man, but then my only son became entangled with a gang of tricksters. To save the foolish lad, I pledged all my lands. Now, unless I pay 400 pounds to the Earl of York by next week, I shall lose everything. Robin Hood, have you no friends? Knight, when I was rich, I had dozens of kind friends. Now that I am a pauper, they have forgotten me. When I need their help, they turn away. Robin Hood, fear not, gentle knight. Today you have made a new set of friends. Say, little John, unlock the treasure chest and count out 400 pounds. Will Scarlet, whose suspicious attitude has completely changed, now he all but weeps with sympathy. Shall he not have cloth for a new coat, Robin? His clothes are badly worn. Robin Hood. Of course, give our friend a length of fine fabric. Choose a shade of blue that will match his eyes. Little John. Here is the money. Good night. I'm going to stop there for just a second. First of all, what are your thoughts about this knight? Do you trust him? Share with your fellow listener. Knight, overwhelmed with gratitude. Indeed, I do not know how to thank you. Tell me, Robin Hood, when shall I come to repay the money you have so kindly lent? Robin Hood, twelve months from now, let us meet beneath this tree. Until then, be merry. Knight, I shall not fail you. Thank you, and farewell, my beloved new friends. Scene 2. Same Sherwood Forest Camp one year later. The knight and his wife, Lady Lee, approach Robin and his men. Lady Lee, with a deep curtsy. A thousand thanks for saving our family from ruin. Robin Hood. Madam, it is our pleasure. How is your son? In a joking tone. I hope he isn't keeping company with swindlers these days. Knight. Thankfully he is not. But sir, let us conclude our business. He hands Robin a heavy sack of gold. Robin Hood peering into the sack. Surely, sir knight, this is too much. We lent you only 400 pounds. Knight. Shrugging. So I added a few extra coins. You may give them to the next few paupers you meet. 
Ha! Huh, do I smell venison roasting? May we invite ourselves to dinner? So, was your prediction correct? Was the night to be trusted? Share with your fellow listener. And what were the motivations of Robin Hood and his men and the night? Share that with your fellow listener. Yes, this marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. The next one will be equally grand, and I know you'll be there ready to watch it.